now. I need to leave so that I can then come back and get my Riolu egg. And of course, I had to go through basically the entire dungeon again in order to get this freaking egg. Well, now I have gotten the freaking egg. Well, now let us see what is inside the egg. I mean, I already know, but... That sure is a Riolu! I was just remembering Zapdog from last time, so... Punch dog. And don't you dare tell me that isn't the greatest name ever. Ah, oh, he's so lonely. I'm going to make him continue being lonely by just depositing him in the PC box and never using him again. Because I have Armstrong. And I feel quite content with Armstrong at the moment. Also, I looked up some stuff and found that apparently there is mm, there is another shiny stone I can find elsewhere in the game. So I could evolve both Yoshino and Norbert. But I'm not going to evolve Yoshino quite yet. Because first I need to go find the, m the move reminder, which if I'm not mistaken might actually be right, be right behind me in Canolave. For as it turns out, by evolving as late as she did, she missed out on Giga Drain. And I want her to have Giga Drain. I also want her to have Petal Dance, which she should learn in like two levels or so. And here we have Maka evolving into Scizor. Through the process of leveling up while holding the item she is supposed to be traded with. Congratulations, your Maka is now slower but considerably stronger. Ah, uh, no, that is not the move reminder. That is the opposite of the move reminder. Meh. I mean, I'm late enough into the game that the move reminder should be available somewhere, right? Hmm. Sailor Eldritch's house. That's an ominous name if I ever heard one. <laughs> I think that dude has like a side quest in the post game or something, but... Okay, I looked it up. The move reminder is in Pastoria City, which is so freaking far from here. I'm going to need to pull out my flyer again. Good, I have a heart scale. So in that case, I can presumably give Yoshino Giga Drain again. Again, I say. I mean, she never had one. She never had it before, but she should have it because it's objectively better than Mega Drain. Right, Yoshino wants to learn Petal Dance. I suppose I'll just get rid of Ingrain then. Oh, Ingrain means I can't switch Yoshino out, well then definitely getting rid of it. And then after that, there really isn't anything else for her to learn that would be worthwhile, so now I might as well evolve her, now that I know that I can still evolve Norbert afterwards. Congratulations! Your Yoshino evolved into Roserade! And with that... 
I just accidentally messed up stuff on it on the emulator, but thankfully it was easily fixed. Now then, Yoshino has gotten all the level ups she can actually get before the gym, so... Switching to leveling up other things! And yet I'm still giving everything up front the, uh, the amulet coin, even though I'm not battling trainers right now. Because that's how much sense I make. Okay, sure didn't take long to get Korra up to level 40. <laughs> Actually, at this rate, Wells might need to do some level grinding on his own in order to be up to par with the rest of the team. Everything else is just hitting level 40 too quickly. And now it is time for Wells to evolve! There is a lot of evolution going on in this episode. Congratulations! Your Wells evolved into Gastrodon! And with that, I suppose he would be capable of level grinding on his own, but... Meh. I still feel like using other Pokémon to level grind for him, because I mean, I still can. He is not yet at the point where he, where he is guaranteed to be able to handle everything here on his own. It occurs to me, despite the fact that I am terrified of self-destructing Gravelers, I do think Armstrong can probably handle some self-destructing Gravelers. I mean, Armstrong and Bucketman both. So, why not just go over to Iron Mountain and level grind there? Just you wait, this is going to backfire horribly and Armstrong is going to die from an explosion. Armstrong was not able to one-shot that Graveler. Suddenly I have second thoughts about this. Bucketman, on the other hand, should be perfectly capable of one-shotting a Graveler. And even if he doesn't, his defense should be enough to even survive an explosion. Okay, so Bucketman can't one-shot them either. But at least he could, in fact, survive a self-destruct. A self not even explosion, huh? Well then, never mind, this was a stupid idea. So it occurred to me, I am pretty sure that Wells can learn Ice Beam. And I mean, I have the coins for it, so why not teach him Ice Beam? I do believe I was lamenting earlier the lack of a special ice move, so... Why not give him a special ice move, if he can learn it? He can learn it. Awesome. And so can Korra, but again... Korra! Special moves! Dumb freaking idea! Okay, and with that, I think I'm finally ready for the next gym. In which, in which I do believe Wells will probably carry most of the weight. Because it's a steel type gym and I mean I could also use Korra, but... I'm pretty sure the leader has a Magneton. Korra is not a good choice against the Magneton! Of course, I have so many options to deal with steel types in general that there probably isn't much to worry about from this particular gym.
All right, and here we are at the gym leader. Now, do I want to lead with Wealth or do I want to lead with Armstrong, who is currently leading the party? Eh, Armstrong will probably be fine. Ah, that's Orberg's gym badge. I see, I see. You defeated my son. But that's no surprise, he still has much to learn. In place of my son Roark, I, Byron, will take your challenge. And of course, he leads with Magneton. At the same time, I don't think Armstrong really has anything in particular to fear from Magneton. Cross Chop! Which would usually be an unreliable move, but thankfully Armstrong has no guard, which means that it will always hit. On the downside, it also means that opponent's moves will always hit him, but meh. Cross chop again! Oh, well that did not one shot. On the other hand, I do believe that the next move will take it out. For a second there, I thought it said Gastrodon, and was wondering what the hell he was doing with a Gastrodon. But that's not a Gastrodon, that's a Bastiodon. Which is not the same Pokémon. Not the same at all. Well, that was the most difficult gym battle ever. I said I wanted Wells to do the heavy lifting, and then Armstrong is sitting solo on the gym leader. Hmm, my sturdy Pokémon defeated! You are strong enough to take down my prized team of Pokémon. In recognition of that power, I give you this, the Mine Badge! Having the Mine Badge enables you to use the hidden move strength any time outside of battle. And you now have six Gym Badges. That means all Pokémon up to level 70 will obey you without question. Here, take this too. That TM-91 contains the move Flash Cannon. If it hits, it may also lower the target's special defense. Ugh, reminds me of my previous run again, where I had a Magnemite who died in this very battle, and then I got Flash Cannon, which I had been thinking of teaching to it. In any case, in any case, the idea was that I was supposed to end the previous episode with that gym battle, but then, of course, the previous episode ended up having way too much footage for that to actually happen, so instead that lead into the, fu into the final narration happened in the middle of the episode, and I had to cut the final narration that I actually did record. Well, time for more plot exposition, I suppose. Hey, Vega, over here, this way. Okay, but if you're going to talk a lot in this cutscene, I'm not voicing you. Oh, he isn't. Okay, I get it. Hmm. Everyone's here, finally. Vega, everyone, listen. You may have forgotten already, but I study the evolution of Pokemon. And the more I study, the more mysteries appear and multiply, Pokémon that evolve, and those that don't, that makes them different from each other. Do those that are immature as living beings evolve to ones more mature? If so, what do we make of the legendary Pokémon that don't evolve? Are we to assume that the legendary Pokémon are complete as creatures? Also, are we to assume that Unknown are complete as creatures, and that Love Disk is complete? Clearly, there is no room for improvement for, um, for these Pokémon. This is where you three come in. In the Three Lakes of Sinnoh, there are said to be Mirage Pokémon. If, if we can obtain data on them, it may shed some light on how the process of Pokémon evolution works. I need help from each one of you in this grand undertaking. Help me find these Pokémon that are considered to be Mirages. What are you saying? 
I didn't get a Pokedex. And who was it that bolted from the lab before I had the chance to give you a Pokedex? But that's water under a bridge. Seeing Pokemon with your own eyes is, more, is important for you in becoming be a better trainer, too. You bet, Professor. This will add to the Pokedex database and help advance our research. Hmm. I would have made all of you go regardless. Anyway, now, there are three lakes. Fortuitously, there are three of you. You should therefore split up and investigate the lakes individually. Lucas, you go to Lake Verity. Yes, sir. Blort, I want you to investigate Lake Acuity. That will take you almost to Snowpoint City. The road there is harsh. I need a tough trainer to go. Uh, yeah, of course. Gramps, you know how to call it. You can tell I'm the hotness. Oh God, shut up! Very well, I'm counting on you. And that leaves Vega with Lake Valor. The lake is between Veilstorm and Pastoria, if memory serves. Doom! Has it stopped? Are all of you unharmed? What was that about? Out. No, wait, I mean the TV! News anchors, anything! Okay, they sure held on that picture for a long time. What you've just witnessed is actual footage from the scene. It was taken by a cameraman who happened to be there. It's certainly impressive. Who knows what the explosion could expose at the lake? They said it was an explode. Hmm, but why at Lake Valor? Let's get outside. I'm concerned about the town. You kids, be careful going down the stairs. Well, since you said that... Oh, stop talking to me. Since you said that, I'm going to run down the stairs. Why can't I run down the stairs? I clearly could see that I stopped running as soon as I entered the stairs. Stupid kids game, trying to present the main character and the protagonist as being all responsible and moral and such. Hey, hey, old dude and kids, did you hear? They're saying there was a huge explosion at Lake Valor. But I hear everything's fine now. I guess it was just a lot of noise. Well, it is now time for me to do some story stuff. Although I think I'm going to have to, p to switch Armstrong out of the front of the party because, well, the, level, the next level limit isn't that far off, so I should probably refrain from using Armstrong and Wells at the moment, unless absolutely necessary. Also, I just gotta, I just gotta say, I finally have a full party of six fully evolved Pokémon! It is so beautiful. So in order to underline the incredible urgency of the situation going on right now, I decided I was not going to take out John Smith and fly to the mountain lakefront. Instead, I went the entire way on foot. Clearly, that was a logical thing to do in this urgent situation. And here we are. Hmm. That grunt didn't even want to battle me. But this grunt does want to battle me. Magikarps, eh? What did those poor Magikarps ever do to you? Do you not know that Magikarps evolved to become amazing? Oh, sure. Immediately after I said that I should tr try and not use my fighting type, you send out something that my fighting type would be excellent again. Ah, oh, well. Fury type, uh, mm, Fury Cutter does more damage the more times I use it, so... I'm just going to pawn these guys with Fury Swipes. No, not Fury Swipes. That's what the mm, Glamiao was using. Fury Cutter. That didn't even seem to do anymore, though. Hmm.
I was about to complain that then you sent out something that Fury Cutter would be not very effective against, but then again, it's dark flying, so Fury Cutter will in fact be neutral. I sense a boss coming up. The mission is proceeding without a hitch. The boss should be pleased. Everything is for e everything is for everyone and for the good of Team Galactic. I recognize your face. You're the child who raided the Team Galactic building in Eterna. <laughs> Jupiter should be ashamed of herself being beaten by a child. But anything and anyone that opposes Team Galactic must be crushed. Even the very thought of opposition will not be tolerated. On that we can agree, only replace Team Galactic with Team Your House is on fire and we are completely on the same page. Now... Yeah, Ice Fang. I mean, less than perfect accuracy but still close enough to perfect accuracy that... Oh, come on! Do you not know that Gyarados is amazing? How could you not be one-shotted by the by the amazing Gyarados' amazing move? You know, Korra, it would have been nice if you'd scored that critical hit one turn ago. Of course, then I would have been left thinking that it didn't actually matter. Hmm. It's most likely going to have levitate, so... Aqua Tail, I think, will deal neutral damage. Aqua Tail did indeed deal neutral damage. Oh dear! Oh, but then again, Bronzor has terrible offensive stats. Yep, for being super effective, that did practically nothing at all. After this, though, I should at least heal Korra up, I suppose. Then again, I can deal super effective damage on this thing. I could probably one-shot it. I think. Most likely. Ah, Double, ah. That's gonna be not very effective, right? So... Yep, still did a fair bit though. Okay, that was the worst thing that could possibly happen. You know, in my previous game, I relied so much on Korra that like in the post game, she died eventually, and I decided right there and then that the run was over. In this case, I suppose I wouldn't go that far, but how dare you? Just, how dare you, you horrible person! So, basically now all of my early game g team leaders are gone. That's just... Excuse me, I just got... I can't even form a coherent sentence right now. Never mind the coherent sentence I'm forming right now. The one Pokemon I depended on the most. The one Pokemon whom I genuinely thought would carry me to the very end of the journey. But unfortunately, I was wrong. Goodbye, Korra. Truly, you shall be missed. I close my eyes and I can see the day we met Just one moment and I knew you're my best friend Do anything for you We've gone so far and done so much And I feel like we've always been Together, right by my 
Well, now who do I grab? Hmm. I suppose Ozai would be would be filling a niche that is currently completely unfilled. And well, Gora was basically doing a lot of the stuff that Wells is also capable of doing. So yeah, I suppose that makes about as much sense as anything. Still, F. Of all the worst things that could happen, this is the worst possible thing. Will Vega be able to recover from this terrible loss of terribleness? Find out next time.